G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here and in today's video, I wanna actually take a look at the 2017 AFL draft and redraft it from one to 10 for you. Now redrafting a draft is actually kind of a complex thing, especially when the draft was only a couple of years ago because there's so many different criteria. Do you go based on just rankings of how well they've performed so far or do you base it still highly on potential? I've decided to go for a mix today and I'm trying to redraft exactly how I think clubs would choose should the draft be redrafted today hypothetically. So in other words, I've taken into consideration both performance up to this date as well as the potential that I believe each prospect has. So I'll be redrafting clubs to the clubs that actually have that pick, but I'm not gonna be taking into account the actual list needs for the club at that time. That's getting way too intricate. So I'm just gonna redraft basically a ranking of the top 10 in my opinion. Now, before I crack into that top 10, I just need to let you guys know we've started an AFL Fantasy League. For anyone who watches the channel, True Footy, there is a link in the description, or actually it's the Fantasy League code in the description. Uh, make sure you join up, obviously it's for free. And um, we got like 130 people joined last year, so let's see if we can beat that this year. But without further ado, let's get into the top 10. With pick one, I am selecting West Coast's Tim Kelly. Now I ummed and art about including Tim Kelly at all because he's a mature age player, so I wasn't sure if that would actually work with this hypothetical exercise, but I thought I decided to go with it in the end. He's only 25 years old, turning 26 this season. I think he's probably got a good six or seven years left in him, but on top of that, he had a top five round low finish last season. He's obviously one of the premier midfielders in the game. I think any club who was hypothetically holding pick one in this redraft would pick Tim Kelly, no doubt about it. The scary thing about him is that because he's only been playing AFL for a couple of years, you could argue he's still got a little bit of development in him left. In my opinion, if the draft was redrafted today, Tim Kelly would undoubtedly go pick one. With pick two, I select another WA boy, Aaron Norton from the Western Bulldogs. Now, Aaron Norton was taken with pick nine originally in this draft, but he's surpassed expectations to such an extent that I think most would be considering with pick one or two in this redraft. He was drafted as a high potential McGovern-like intercepting key back, but he's proven he's got champion-like qualities as a key forward as well. For a 19-year-old to, I think, lead the league in contested marks last year, that is an outrageous effort, and we've already seen him tear teams apart. I think the fact that he's performing this well as a key forward straight away is so impressive. He's probably got 10 to 12 years of playing at at least this level to go. And the fact that, uh, you know, I think he's got a really high ceiling. I think he's clearly the second best choice behind Tim Kelly. With pick three, I am selecting Hawthorne's James Warple. Now, James Warple famously slipped to pick 45 in his draft. I think it was a combination of perhaps bad foot skills or perceived bad foot skills. And I think for interstate clubs, there may have been a worry about the go home factor. But what we've seen is incredible from Warple. Actually, I think he's really tidied up his foot skills for a start, and he's proven to be almost, no, I wouldn't say a premier midfielder in the competition, but certainly one of the best young midfielders going around. So much so that as a 19 year old in his second season, he won Hawthorne's best and fairest in the absence of Tom Mitchell, which is an outrageous effort. He's a strong contested midfielder. He's explosive. And like I said, his ball use has really tidied up. I can see him being an elite midfielder one day and I just can't believe Hawthorne got lucky again. Pick four, I've picked Collingwood's exciting half forward, Jaden Stevenson. Now, as you all know, Jaden Stevenson had an amazing start to his career, picking up the rising star in his first year, bagged 38 goals and nearly became a premiership player all in his first season. He's a prolific goal scorer already, but his speed and endurance as well, making a dangerous option on the wing as well. He's an outrageously talented footballer, but I think I have him slightly behind the top three, purely because I think he's closer to his ceiling than someone like a James Warper or Aaron Norton. And I guess that is fairly debatable, but I think he will settle as a dangerous half forward wingman and for me that's why I just kind of have him below the on baller in James Warple. With pick five is my first probably uh, say a surprise to a lot of you and I can feel the dirty comments coming already but I'm taking Luke Davies Uniac. This one will probably be a bit of a surprise even though he was taken with pick four originally in the draft I think I'm picking him mostly on his potential here. Now he hasn't had as quick a start to his career as some of the guys I've already listed like Warple and Stevenson. However I believe 
that's just because his game style isn't as easy to adapt to an AFL environment straight away. He's a big inside mid with acceleration and his game kind of relies on a contested style and it's harder to do that well at AFL level straight away compared to someone like Sam Walsh who's really good to accumulating on the outside. That's more suited to doing well early. So long story short, I think Davies Uniac, I, I really truly believe with his size, his explosiveness, he has the highest potential of any midfielder in this draft. I understand he hasn't put the runs on the board compared to some of the other guys that I'm probably gonna pick both before and after him, but I do think he would get taken in the top five if it was redrafted again today. At pick number six, I'm taking GWS's Sam Taylor. Now, Sam Taylor is kind of like Norton, but more of a less dominant defensive version. Obviously, he's more of an intercepting key back than a key forward. Nonetheless, like Norton, he's performed really well for his age. Like I've already said, key position players do take longer to come on. So to see him come in and play to such a high standard already in an established team, it's too much to ignore. And I think he's a good chance to be one of the best of the next wave of key for a key defenders rather coming across the AFL. At pick seven, I've got West Coast Oscar Rowland and I, I think this is going to be another one that's going to attract some criticism as well. But in my opinion, Allen's achievements are easily overlooked when they shouldn't be. He was a Lark medalist the year he was drafted, so obviously the best player in the under 18s championships. And he slipped to pick 21, and I think in hindsight that has proven to be a huge bargain for West Coast. He's another key position player that has surprised us all with his ability to adapt to AFL level really quickly. And more impressively than that, he debuted as a key defender, ended that first year as a key forward, and played most of last year as a second ruck slash key forward as well. So I actually think Oscar Allen, like someone like Matthew Pavlich, has the potential to play in just about any position on the ground. At 194 centimeters, he's also an athletic freak with really sticky hands. I don't want to keep talking up my boy so much, but I honestly believe Oscar Allen deserves to be pick seven if the draft was redrafted today. At pick eight, I am finally selecting the actual number one draft pick, Brisbane's Cam Rayner. Now again, this one is a tough one to balance between performance to date and actual potential because like Davies Uniac, Rayner has arguably the most potential out of anyone in this draft crop. Now he's had a tough couple of years in the AFL since making his debut. He hasn't been terrible, but he hasn't probably come on as quickly as some thought because he's quite physically ready as well. But I think given his ability in terms of football now, and also he's an athletic beast and super strong, much like uh, Dustin Martin, the sheer potential means he will probably still get taken in the top 10. I do acknowledge that two years is way too early to be making calls on these kids, so Cam Rainer is still a very good chance to be one of the best players in this draft, hence why I only have him sliding to pick nine, and he's still ahead of some guys who probably played better today. Pick eight. Did I say Cam Rainer pick nine? I meant pick eight. The actual pick nine is Richmond's Jack Higgins. Now I will remind you, this is a redraft. I'm not ranking them purely on performance because if it was based purely on performance, Jack Higgins would probably go in the first couple picked of this draft cohort. He's been brilliant at AFL level to date. He's an awesome pressure forward and creative small forward as well. But for me, I think he's probably closer to his ceiling than some other players around him. He's under 180 centimeters. And I can't really see him transitioning to a full-time midfielder. And in today's game, I think that probably will count against him. So if the draft is redrafted, he'd go top 10, which is significantly higher than he went. I think he was like pick 17, but I think he would go below the guys that I've named already so far. With pick 10, I am selecting Western Bulldogs player Ed Richards, and this is a personal favorite of mine. He probably doesn't get the recognition I think he deserves from others generally in the AFL landscape. Richards is a player who burst onto the scene really quickly with the dogs with his speed and his skill. He's already played 41 games for the club, and in my opinion, he's demonstrated a real ability to tear teams apart. He can play as a damaging running defender, a wingman, or I could even see him settling as a pure midfielder one day. He was taken with pick 11 originally in this draft, and I think he's done enough to consolidate that and justify his selection at around that range. That's why I'm taking him at pick 10. So guys, that is my top 10. I know what you're thinking. What about this player from my club? What about Paddy Dow? Look, as far as I'm concerned, there's a huge gut of unproven midfielders sort of in that next tier who I don't think are spuds by any means. They're probably still gonna be good players. But guys like Paddy Dow, you got Andy Brayshaw from Frio, 
And Adam Chera, also from Frio, probably hasn't been given a huge opportunity in the gut. You got Brian Myers, who's a really, really good goal sneak forward. But again, as a goal sneak forward, does he get redrafted into the top 10? I'm not so sure. Hunter Clark, Nick Coffield, these guys just haven't quite shown enough to make my top 10. I'm probably forgetting someone who I'll be reminded of in the comments. But that's it, guys. I want you to let me know, in your opinion, what I've got wrong and what would your top 10 redraft look like. If you enjoyed the video format, let me know in the comments as well, because I'd like to keep doing more of these. There's obviously been like 30 drafts in the AFL before, so if you like this format, I can continue this series and do another draft next time. Also, as one final note, I do think I should stress that I understand that after two years, it's way too early to make a call on these players. There's still so much water to go under the bridge, and I'm looking forward to see how some of these kids turn out because as far as I'm concerned, it's probably one of the strongest drafts we've seen in a long time, especially that top 10. A lot of them were able to make an impact for their club pretty early in the piece. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.